Okay, everybody, I am so, so, so excited today because I get the privilege to talk with Curran Walters about the latest episode of Titans, and you know him as Jason Todd, a.k.a. Robin, a.k.a. Red Hood. We're talking about episode five, so a lot of spoilers here, so make sure you watch that first and come back. Curran, how are you doing today, man? Yeah, I'm amazing. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, hell yeah, man. You know, I was so excited to talk to you in particular because I'm always a big fan of whoever I'm interviewing what they got going on in the background and you always got a surprise and it's a sick setup you got with the red hood and the poster too. Hey, only if you saw it was behind the camera. It's too much shit, but (laughs) yeah, I got, I got the cool red hood helmet and I got this amazing painting. So yeah, it's fun, man. Dude, that that's amazing. And it's so exciting to see that you love the character so much. And I'm not saying this to butter you up, but it was my favorite episode of Titans yet. So there's a lot going on emotionally, though, with Jason here. So my first question to you is just in the beginning of this episode when he's having these nightmares and Bruce says, no more Rob until you see a shrink. You know, can you kind of just get me in his headspace at this moment where he's at from where we saw him last end of the season? Yeah, yeah. First of all, thank you so much. That means a lot. Um, oh, no problem. I, I um, saw Jason lead off at the, at the end of season two. He, was, you know, he felt really betrayed by the Titans and – you know, especially after Rose let him down, he was he was an absolute mess. I mean, we saw that scene on the on the rooftop with Dick and everything. Um, you know, I think one of the beautiful things about episode five is that we get to explore that Bruce and Jason relationship, which brings up your question of, you know, when, when Jason's with the with the therapist and the shrink, as he would say. Um, you know, it's it's such a touchy subject to Jason because ultimately before he becomes Red Hood, he's he Bruce tells him that he can't be Robin and I think that really touches home to him because that's where he felt safe that's where he felt um you know close to the Titans and and obviously now with connecting with Jonathan Crane and and trying to get away from the whole Robin and then becoming Red Hood he's struggling now with what he wants to be he wants to go back to be that old Robin but now he he's trying to move on so he's just throughout the whole season man we just see him just there's so many emotions, just what, what is going on? You know what I mean? This poor kid. Um, so that, that's such a fun dynamic to explore throughout the season. Yeah. And, and you mentioned him going to Jonathan Crane in this episode, you see that he has this moment where it's kind of touching because Bruce is calling him son, but then he basically wants to shut him down as Robin and protect him in a way from wearing the costume. Yeah. But when I'm watching that scene, what is it when you were approaching this as an actor, what was that moment where you're like, okay, how did you know he wanted to go? What, like, what was his driving force to go to Crane at that point? Like, what, what was it for him? I, I think in a way, Jason felt like this was his only option. And in a way, he wanted to prove Bruce that he was wrong about him. And, you know, obviously the alleyway scene, we saw that. So I think this was Jason's form of, of, of moving on and wanting to get rid of his fear and, and um, you know, everything that happened with him with before Superboy saved them, you know, almost almost dying and, and all that. Um, there was just a lot going on in his head. And, you know, as Tony as he heard about the fear gas, he's like, maybe this this is my only way out. Maybe this will help me feel again, feel better. Um, so obviously we see what what happens with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's crazy because then as the episode goes on, you see he's taking this antidote to fear that Scarecrow made. Now I always wonder, because you're such a good actor and what blows me away is how you hit that sweet Thank spot you. where you're not overdoing it with the serum. You're like hitting it that I'm still invested. So how do you find that where it's that blend of being the emotions of Jason, but having this effect of like a drug on you? Yeah, man. It was just a lot of, a lot of uh, alone time spent trying to figure out what the hell to do. Um, <laughs> in Toronto, I would, I would just pace around my apartment. I was like, does this feel right? Does this feel right? No, it's, it's, it's more of that. No, that's too much. That's too little. So a lot of that, um, you know, just really finding the right balance and in, in, um, having such an amazing team on set. It was like, you know, does, does this work? Does this not work? So it was just, you know, it was, it was a big team effort. And, um, you know, I think, I think it came out awesome. And the fans are obviously enjoying it. Yeah. And I mean, I think what's also cool, too, is in your big episode here, it being this Red Hood origin, there's a lot of hints about other Batman villains we always love to see. And I thought the coolest part to me, Easter egg wise so far in the show is you opening Bruce's little keepsake container there. Do you still geek out 
as Curran seeing this stuff when you're on set, like, holy shit, I mean, I'm, I'm touching this stuff? <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean, hey, man, like, every time I walked into the Batcave, I just, like, stopped, and I was like, you know how many people will just, like, die to be here, like, in the Batcave? Like, so, of course, I, I kind of geek out on everything, to be honest with you. I mean, that stuff is obviously so cool, but the Batcave, I geek out on every time. Every time I see, like, the Nightwing costume or even my costume, like, in the in the suitcase or whatever, um, yeah, man, I'm – I'm 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 such a, a geek now with all this. Yeah, and I mean, in this timeline too, it's season two to season three. Did you always know too that you were going to eventually be Red Hood, or like when did you find out that was happening? You know, I didn't know throughout season two. I was I was I had a feeling that it would happen. Um, I had a feeling that you know how could it not? I mean, we already brought Jason Todd to life. It, it, it felt like the only option. But at the end of season two, when we got picked up for season three. They wanted me to come in for a fitting, and that's when I found out, you know, we're going to be making a new costume and whatnot. And the pandemic hit, so that kind of, you know, pushed everything back like a year. Um, but, yeah, towards the end of season two, we found out, and I was just thrilled. I was just so happy about it. So, yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's, and you know what? I was excited to see the twist. I'm not, like, this huge comic book reader, so I didn't even know Jason Todd even is Red Hood. So, for me, I was like, my jaw dropped. It's exciting. Uh, and what's cool is when you're playing Red Hood, there's like this voice effect, I think, on you, if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but how is that going down? How is the voice being made for Red Hood? Oh, that's actually all me. I'm kidding. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you no, got man. Me for a second. <laughs> you know, it, that was, that was one of the things that was, that was one of the biggest challenges to me because, you know, in the mask, you, as a character, you don't want people to know it's Jason, but, you know, and, and until you know, Nightwing and I have that fight and he knocks my helmet off and he's like, oh, Jason. So for me, it was when I was in the helmet, I would make my voice sound deeper. You know, it, it wasn't that much deeper, but it just gave it kind of that more just just straightforward, like I'm here to do a job. I'm, I'm now a killer, like just kind of badass um, voice. But, you know, and then we did a uh, voiceover in the studio and that's where we kind of put the effects on it after to make it sound more muffled and all that. So it was a process. I mean, every Red Hood scene I did basically with the mask on, I had to go do again in, in the studio. So it, mm. was, it was pretty cool. There was a lot of time spent in there and that was new to me. So yeah, it was all very fun. So what I'm getting from this too, it seems like uh, Red Hood also has more of its challenges in that part. I mean, because you're, you're playing Jason, you're playing Robin, you're playing Red Hood. Yeah. Having said that, what to you is your favorite to play? Like, what do you have the most fun doing? They all, they all are so much fun. I, Robin will always have my heart, man. I mean, it, yeah. I, that costume. And the last time I put on that costume, I was like, that, that was, that was very, uh, that was very sad. But then Red Hood is so fun. You know, it's, I always love a new challenge and, and figuring out a character. And um, yeah, man, just like everything from, cause you're, you don't see your facial expressions when you're in the, when you're in the helmet. So it was like everything from the head movement to the way you, you looked um, to if your head was too high, it was, it was, a, it's a lot that goes into it, you know? So it's something you figure out over time and yeah, it's fun. Did you feel an extra pressure taking on Red Hood? Because it seems like to me, Batman fans, they're known for loving the villains. So every time there's a villain betrayal, they want the best. This is dear to them, Red Hood. Did you feel that? Did you feel like this anxiety taking it on? Absolutely. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. And I think yeah. I feel that I felt that because I care so much, you know, I, I want to give the fans and um, what they like and, and what they want. So yeah, um, there were, were, there was 10 months of me in my head. Is this right? Is, am I doing this correctly? Da, da, da. So now that we're here and, and the, the episodes are out and the fans love it, I'm, I'm thrilled. Yeah. They love you as Red Hood. You're absolutely killing it. And I'm going to ask you a geeky question for those fans is that yes. who is your favorite Batman villain of all time, but you can't say Red Hood. You got to know where I'm going. I mean, the Joker. Oh, you're going Joker. Okay. I'm okay. The Joker. classic. Heath Ledger was, he, his take on the Joker just made me absolutely love the character. I mean, yeah. that was insane. And he, yeah, I just, I, I love a crazy villain. So that must have been an honor for you then having this moment as Robin where the Joker basically yeah. beats you to death. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I wish we got to actually see the Joker, you know? So that would be cool to maybe, I don't know. Go do back to maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, but that's that like people cool. can see 
Oh yeah. And, and man, people can see how passionate you are just in this interview with what you're doing. And again, where I said, you have stuff that in your interviews you have in the background, you post about a lot on social media. Does that help you be more motivated acting wise? Is it all add up? Yeah, man. I, I think for me, it's, it's, it's a lot of, that goes around this character. You know, it's, this character means it's so much to me. I mean, my dad's name was Jason. My grandma's name is Robin. Um, oh, my man is Robin. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a totally, it's, it's weird how the universe works. So it's, this character is, it's, it means a lot to me. And now being given the opportunity to do Red Hood, it's like, it's my life, you know? It kind of, it catapulted, catapulted me to the next step of my career too. So I'm just, I'm very, very thankful for, for this opportunity. Yeah, and it's it's great because you've just shown your worth here in this DC universe. It's such a huge franchise. What I'm also curious about is because you're a big fan of this stuff, are you a fan of all the other superhero stuff too? Like, do you watch The Boys? Do you like MCU? Does that also kind of catch your eye? Would you say you're yeah, on the team? Yeah, I mean, man, I like all the Spider Mans growing up. I love um, the Batmans. I mean, I, lo I love Batman, of course. Um, the Boys is, is great, is fantastic. Yeah. We actually have the same costume designers as the boys, which is so cool. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of like slowly getting into all the superhero stuff. I never really was before this show, before I became a part of this show. Um, but I mean, how could you not like Batman and the Joker and all that, you know? So yeah, I'm, I'm slowly becoming more of a geek day by day. And I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, also too, besides you saying you're being a geek, you're very wise on Twitter with great quotes I love. And you had one that you said, if you turn I have to into I get to, your life will change. Yeah. Be thankful for all the opportunities you get every day. Can you kind of elaborate on this? Do you go yeah, with this man. every day? Um, I, I saw a, a, uh, an interview um, of somebody explaining that, and it was like, you know, I, I think we take a lot of things for granted. You know, it's like, oh, I have to go get my car washed, or I have to go to the gym, or I have to. It's like, if you turn these things in like into a positive mindset, like you get to – go to the gym you're lucky that you're you're able to walk and wake up that day healthy and, and all that you you get to go to work you're given this opportunity it's, it's just it's just changing that mindset into in, into a positive mindset and, and, and just looking at everything in a brighter mindset it's like i'm still learning to do that day by day you know i still have moments like oh i have to do this i have to do that but it's like hey if you switch that your life i think dramatically changes in the way you just you see the world differently so yeah, it's important yeah. to do. No, and while you're giving this great wisdom, I, I have to ask too, like you've already proven how strong your acting chops are. And I can already just tell from your vibe that you're a hard worker. But what's driving you to do this? Like what is the ultimate dream for you at the end of the day in your career? Like what, what, where do you want to be? Yeah, man, I, I mean, I think there's always an end goal. I mean, but I, I just want to do this for the rest of my life. I, I genuinely love working. I, I genuinely love the creative aspect of it. And everything that goes in from like, you know, casting to, you know, behind the scenes to being on camera to just everything. I was just like, it's a never ending process. And like, even just being in the studio, it's just, I'm, I literally just fell in love with this craft from day one. Um, I think my ultimate, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's an end goal, but I would love to win, you know, an award someday, like an Oscar or an Emmy. And, and you know, oh, yeah. I think, yeah, it's for me, it's like, if, if you genuinely believe in yourself and manifest that, it's like, it'll happen. Like I manifested getting my own show someday and like, here I am on Titans and you know, who, who would ever have thought. So it's just, I think the universe works out in crazy ways like that. If you work hard and you genuinely love what you do and you, you, you fail and you keep going and you, you fail more and you keep going. It's, it's, it's bound to work out, man. It's, you know, so we'll see what, what happens in, in, in the future, but I'm, I'm really excited for what the future holds. I got, a, yeah, I, got man. I got a genuinely good feeling. <laughs> yeah, good. I do too. I, and I think everyone's just excited to see what you're going to do next in this show because we are in the middle of Titan season three on HBO Max, everybody. There is new episodes every Thursday. So make sure you check those out. Watch Corinne crush it as usual as Red Hood, as Jason, as Robin. Who knows who he's going to play next? Yeah, who knows? Where are we <laughs> who, who knows? But Corinne, thank you so much for joining me, man. I hope to talk to you in the future one day. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Thank you.